Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Welcome back, everyone. Glad to have you here today on our Wellness and Weight Loss Wednesday, where each and every week, we bring you some topic regarding body transformation or really reshaping your health in order to be able to move through this life effortlessly with the body that you were given. So we all know, and we've known this now for thousands of years, that bodies come in many different shapes and sizes. So we have that Vata body type, which is thinner joints, smaller calves. We've got the mesomorph type, which is maybe a little bit more muscular, or at least um, you can see the muscles a little bit more, kind of in the middle. And then we have more of the endomorphic body type, or also called the Kapha. So when we look at that, we say, okay, the kapha has a little bit more larger joints. They have typically have maybe larger calves, not every single kapha, uh, more of a rounder face. And when we look at these bodies, we say, okay, each of these bodies are unique. Each of these bodies are going to be different. They have attributes of one style of body type, like vata, pitta, or kapha, and some of the other. Some body types are going to gain weight more easily than others. For example, the kapha body type or the endomorph, it's one and the same. That body type is going to gain weight much more easily. They're going to be much more sensitive to carbohydrates. It doesn't mean they shouldn't eat any. It just means they're going to be more sensitive to it. That body type is going to need more movement on a daily basis because their metabolism simply is not as robust or fast and does not use glucose as well as the vata or ectomorph. Now, all the pluses though are that they typically have great longevity, they've got great hair, skin, and nails, good for aging, they've got a robust immune system, really good tolerance to exercise. But what happens though is that they can be susceptible to all of the accumulations, the weight gain, the heart disease, the type 2 diabetes, the high blood pressure, low uh, thyroid function, and um, a lot of inflammatory issues with being too sedentary or not moving the body enough. So I wanted to share that with you. Today's not going to be an entire body type episode. Uh, You can learn more about your dosha and what your unique body type is starting back on episode 1900. Or actually, the better thing to do would just be really to listen to those Ayurvedic based podcasts. We will link up that category of podcasts. So, if you're interested in Ayurvedic medicine and your body type, you can go to stephencabral.com forward slash 19. Four, four. That's today's show notes. And we'll link up everything that I talk about today in those show notes, but I'll link up all of the Ayurvedic based shows. So, Again, we, have a, we know that we're given this unique and this beautiful body to be able to take us through life. And whenever that you look at it in a negative way, like, oh, my, you know, I gain weight even just looking at carbohydrates, or I have to be so much more active than my friends. You have to understand, those might be how you look at some of the negatives, but there's so many pros that I mentioned as well. And other people could look at it as, okay, maybe it's easier for them to lose weight or maintain weight, but they don't then have the uh, great anti-aging ability for immunity, for the hair, skin, and nails, and for the body's ability to be able to withstand more stress and, and rugged exercise. So again, there's pros and cons to everything, right? There, there really is, as we say, the grass is always greener, but it doesn't have to be, is that you can respect your body type and you can understand it. But even with your body type, your unique body type, I do want you to understand is that no one was meant to be obese. No one was meant to be so overweight or, or even more than additional weight that they want that, that it affects their health to a great degree. And I know that we have to be sensitive to this and we should be sensitive to this from a cultural-based standpoint. And I don't disagree with that. This is not to fault anyone or shame anyone. That's certainly not what this show is all about. But this show is the understanding that once your BMI, your body mass index, gets to be above a 25, you are at greater risk for all causes of mortality for the most part. And that's because 75% of all causes of mortality are going to be cancer, heart disease, high blood pressure and stroke, as well as forms of uh, type 2 diabetes. So 
when we, when we become more overweight, we lean more towards all of those specific things. And that's not a great way to go through the second half of your life in aging. And now obviously we see it in children. So now we have about now 70%. It used to be about 60%. Now it's up to 70% of adults are obese. And we have now a third of all children are obese. Now keep in mind, that's not overweight. Overweight is a BMI basically between 25 and 29. Obese is over 29. I know many people, many people in my practice, they don't want to be uh, even overweight. They just want to have the right body type for them. And that is what I believe is the right mentality. We're not meant to be walking around super thin or, you know, emaciated or having to see six pack abs. Like that's not necessarily what you need to be or should strive for as a human. Because many of those people I work with as well in terms of uh, people that are that lean and they have their own host of issues. Aged at a much rapid rate, um, very little reserves, micronutrient reserves not in a great mood, low energy because of how depleted they are. So I think we can be in great shape. Yes, you can have abs and it's a nice thing if you choose to have that. You can still be healthy uh, and not be overweight. Like there's, there's a nice medium. It doesn't always have to be wildly in one direction or the other. My job is to help you get as healthy as possible. But when a lot of people are struggling and they just kind of given up and they say, why won't the scale budge? Or why does it only move for a couple of weeks and then I just plateau? I want to share that with you here today. So just like on yesterday's show where I discussed old disease begins in the gut. And honestly, if you, if you don't, if you're dealing with any type of wellness based issue, and I would say weight as well, because it's a health issue. That's why we talk about this. Then I would, I would tune into yesterday's show. But today, what I want to do is share with you really from 20 years of being in private practice over 20 years. Now, this is my 21st year uh, of full-time private practice, not just part-time uh, when I was in undergrad. Uh, but you know what the world wants to, you to do is this. So the world wants you to eat less and they want you to move more. And that's because that's easy for people to say, who are already at a good weight, or maybe their job is in fitness, and they dedicate quite a bit of time to that. But they don't live how regular people live. Like, for example, when I was in my early 20s, I was at the gym, working in the gym and doing nutrition sessions. I was moving. I was hanging around with people in the fitness space industry, right? So it's like my whole life revolved around nutrition, meal prepping, exercising, and it was great. No doubt about it. But most people's job requires them to take care of the family or commute to work, sit at a desk. They don't have that same ability, or maybe I would even say luxury. Now, again, when I was working in gyms and all that, I was still busy. It's not like I wasn't working. I was, but since I worked in a gym, uh, I didn't have to go anywhere, commute time in order to be able to exercise, right? And since the lifestyle was very conducive to me, you know, eating well, because I was around all my peers. Well, that's, of course, again, made it a little bit easier, but it's, it's somewhat out of touch to say, eat less and move more. Now, having said that, you do need to eat an appropriate amount of calories for your body. So if you're having difficulty losing weight, and you've never tracked your calories, well, it might be worth doing just for a week. You don't need to do it for more than a week, but just eat normally how you typically would. Don't change now that you're tracking calories. And if you're at 2,500, 3,000 calories a week, sure, you might need to eat less for right now temporarily. You may need to. Eventually, you could get back there, but you may need to, okay? Now, if you're already down to 1,500 calories, 1,200 calories, how little are you going to eat? Because as you go less and less with your calories, I want you to understand that you are depriving your body of energy and you're depriving your body of micronutrients, which almost no fitness or body transformation expert will talk to you about. So micronutrients are all your vitamins, your minerals, and those are all your vital reserves. Without them, you start to age at a much more rapid rate. And again, that's, it's not talked about very much, but unless you're running labs, you don't really know what your vitamins and minerals levels are. So people assume that they're fine until of course they're not, and then they have to rebuild them back up. So I'm trying to save you that ahead of time. So if you're already down to 12 to 1500 calories, you really can't eat less. You shouldn't eat less. You need to boost your metabolism. We'll talk about that in a moment. And then the other adage is you need to exercise more. Well, many people do. There's no doubt about that. If you're not walking 10,000 steps a day, you need to work up to that. You don't have to do it tomorrow, but you need to add about 10 minutes more walking per day, per week, each week. 
until you get to about an hour and a half or so of walking a day. And you might say, well, I don't have a half hour to walk a day, uh, an hour and a half to walk a day. Keep in mind, you're up for 16 hours a day. I just need normal human movement for about 30 minutes a day. Most people get that. Then I need you to find two other 30 minute time blocks where you're just actively moving your body, walking, just literally moving your body. Because if you're not able to move your body for 90 minutes out of what? Let's see what 16 hours is. Let's actually do the math. 16 times 60, 960 minutes. If you can't move your body for an additional 60 minutes out of 960, then you have to understand is that your body is very sedentary and you're not going to have a boost in metabolism. So an easy way to do this is a 20 minute walk after breakfast or in the morning with your dog, take him, take him or her for a little longer walk. Take the whole family if you want. A lunchtime walk for 20 minutes. It can be, you, could do, you could do laps around your office if you need to, if you can't get outside. And 20 minutes after dinner. Not only will that help you with blood sugar, which we'll get to in a moment, but it's great to get your steps in. And that'll do it. I mean, that plus your normal human movement will get you that 10,000 steps per day. And again, you don't have to do this all at once. Just add a lunchtime walk for now. Just add an after dinner walk for now, again, with the whole family. It's something that I want to get back into uh, a little bit more. And the reason is that we did that when we were away. Uh, during the pandemic, during lockdown, the only time you could leave your house where I was at was for a walk. That was it. You could literally only leave your house for walking, uh, for exercise. So that's what we did. And, and it was great. It was a great family thing to do. So I, I definitely recommend that. Now, that's your starting point. Walking's your starting point. But if you're not doing it, you have to start there. And believe it or not, it is actually beneficial for weight loss. And it is beneficial for fat burning. And it does boost your metabolism. So you start there. Then you can get into your strength training. Okay, you can do body weight just for now. Again, if you're already 30 pounds, 40 pounds overweight, think about it. You're training your body with a weighted vest, 30, 40 pounds, right? So you already have the extra weight, use it. I mean, use it to your advantage, it's weight. Then do your assisted push-ups, your assisted uh, inverted rows, your body weight squats, your body weight lunges, your uh, body weight Romanian deadlifts, your step-ups. Do, literally, you could just climb stairs, but do some resistance-based training that's going to help you boost your metabolism. Okay, how, how often should you do that? Honestly, three times a week is enough. Should you do more days than not? Absolutely, no doubt about it. But in the beginning, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, enough time for you not to lower your metabolism, or even better, if you're doing a flex meal on the weekend of any food that you would like on, let's say, a Saturday, then do a Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday workout. I mean, that, that's fine. What, you can't work out with the weekdays? Just give me one weekday. Do Wednesdays and then the weekend days. So Saturday, Sunday are your workouts, and then Wednesday. Um, we, we Again, remember, if this is a goal to get that scale to move, then I need you to work with me. That's This is how I talk to my clients, right? It's just like, again, it's tough love. Know that it's love, but it's a little tough love. Like, you can't tell me this and then not show me this, right? So I need a little bit. Now, I don't need to overtax you. I'm already telling you that you don't need to drop your calories severely because it's not going to help you. It's going to lower your metabolism in the long run. And I'm also telling you that you don't need to overexercise. I need you to walk. I need you to move. What if you can't walk? Can you hop on an exercise bike? But because if you can, then you can use an exercise bike instead of your walking. All right. And then your strength training, moving your body with the squats, the lunges, the normal human movement. It can just be body weight three times a week. Can you do that? Because if you can, okay, we have now met our nutrition, and we've met our exercise goals. So now if someone's saying, you don't, you know, you're not, you're eating too much, or you're not moving your body enough, you can say, it's not true. I could do more, but it's not necessarily going to move the needle, right? So if you've done those things, and you still have plateaued, and you can't get that scale to move, now we understand it is not eating less. That's not your fault. And it's not moving more. That's not your fault. You've done the two things that I've mentioned, okay? Follow the anti-inflammatory food guides that I recommend. Follow a podcast called The Foundation of All Diets. Uh, you can, Again, like I have systems that you can use, but I don't even want to promote those. I just want to talk about this is what you need to do. Because if you've done those, now you can say, it's not an eating less or moving more issue, but you have to do that first, right? So now that you've done that for a month, two months, great. What do we need to do? Now we need to say this. If the scale is not budging, it's a metabolic disorder, okay? Now, again, that doesn't let you off the hook, right? When I had Addison's disease, type 2 diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, insomnia, 
debilitating allergies, borderline asthma, myalgic encephalomyelitis, all sorts of diseases with my body, all sorts of disorders with my body. I could say, well, you know, I mean, this is it. It's just genetics. It is what it is. It, that's what I had. You might be dealing with weight gain. I was dealing with debilitating autoimmune and other issues. I overcame all of those pretty much through knowledge and trial and error. And you can do the same. I hope to be able to provide you with that knowledge and then you're going to work the process in the best way that you see fit. But there are shortcuts. So if you've already reduced your calories and you've already began to move your body and you've done that now for at least a month or two and the scale is no longer moving, then we have to understand there's more to this and there's a metabolic disorder. It can be fixed. I see it every single day inside of our practice. I want to repeat that. It can be fixed by anyone. It doesn't mean it's going to happen overnight, but once you find the root cause, it's not a, it's not a difficult fix. It's understanding which one of these your metabolic disorder might be related to. This is more controversial, but I have decades of clinical data and there are many books written on this that show that it, it's really not controversial. It's just one of those things that mainstream conventional medicine does not understand yet, even though their peers have published many research articles on this. But there's something called, I believe, I'm, I'm going to see if I can find the podcast for you. So again, everything will be linked up at episode 1944 today, stephencabral.com forward slash 1944. And there's something called toxic fat. I've been invited on a lot of podcasts now to speak on this and other interviews because it's not well understood by most mainstream media. However, when your body's exposed to pesticides like we have in the environment and all sorts of other toxins that we put on our skin with shampoos and conditioners and triclosan and toothpaste and sodium lauryl sulfate and uh, phthalates and parabens and I could go on and on or heavy metals. All of these things enter your bloodstream. They can enter through your skin. They can enter through your mouth, your digestive system, et cetera. Well, what happens is your liver is detoxing 24 hours a day. There's no doubt about it. But when there's a constant and chronic onslaught, it's going to shift these toxins into the safest place it can find. And that's out of your blood. So it doesn't kill you or move into the brain. It's in your fat. And so that is why it is estimated that your body fat is approximately 300 times more toxic than your blood because your body is doing the smartest thing it knows how, and that's removing those toxins, which you can test for an environmental toxicity test or a heavy metal test, and it's moving them into your body fat. That's why when people lose weight and burn body fat, sometimes they don't feel so great because these toxins are being released into their bloodstream again. That is why I can't recommend enough you are doing a functional medicine detox like the one offered over at Equalife, which is clinically proven to be able to use specific phase one and phase two liver detox ingredients, nutrients provided by nature in order to ramp up and get those toxins out faster. So that's a toxicity issue. Now, there are food sensitivities. Many people overweight are continuing to eat foods that are causing inflammation, which is continuing them to cause what's called toxic water weight. I have another podcast on that. We will try to link that up. Toxic water weight is essentially holding 10, 20 pounds of inflammatory water weight where your body looks puffy and swollen, but it's not water. It's not body fat. You're swollen and puffy because your body's so inflamed. Now, it's not just food sensitivities, but gut issues are a big part of that. You can test for gut issues, again, with a lab test called the Candida Metabolic and Vitamins Test. You can test for food sensitivities with a test called the IgG Food Sensitivity Test. These are all open sourced for you over at equi.life forward slash labs, E-Q-U-I dot L-I-F-E forward slash labs. You don't even have to purchase them there. Just know that they are available for you doctor signed off on everything, you get a protocol and a plan to go along with it. But you have to find these underlying root causes. You can work with any naturopathic doctor in the world. You can work with any integrative health practitioner that's a level two. And they'll also be able to get you these labs. So you don't have to work with us personally. You can work with other qualified individuals that know about this. 
Micronutrient deficiencies is a huge reason why the body continues to hold and hold and hold and ask for more calories and increase appetite because you might be feeding it food, but it's deficient of micronutrients. So if you're going way deep on, let's say, fat in your diet to the detriment of protein and carbs, guess what happens? You're missing what? Amino acids. You're missing antioxidants. You're missing other micronutrients, vitamins and minerals that you would get from your protein and your carbs that you're not getting because you're on a high fat diet. Important to keep in mind, micronutrient nutrient testing can be done with something called the starter kit. And we'll, we'll link these up as well. Blood sugar dysregulation, another reason for weight gain. If your body is in a constant state of elevated blood sugar, especially overnight, you are going to be dealing with an inability to tap into body fat stores to a greater degree. You, need, you don't need to have low blood sugar. You need to have normal blood sugar, which is between about 75 and 95 when you use your glucometer, okay? Okay. The next one is estrogen dominance. So many women and some men are unknowingly suffering from hormonal dysregulation, mainly estrogen dominance. This is when progesterone levels are too low, typically normal estrogen levels, but it leads to estrogen dominance. That's because estrogen and progesterone are meant to be in a perfect harmony in a woman's body. And in men, there can be a conversion of testosterone to estrogen, which creates estrogen dominance. This leads to increased weight gain in the hips. It leads to tenderness in the breasts. That goes for men and women. It can lead to oily skin. It can lead to acne. It can lead to thinning of the hair on the top of the head. It can lead to weight gain. Okay, so we have to understand this. Estrogen dominance is another one with a metabolic-based issue. One more that I want to share with you today is... How cortisol affects the thyroid. So I've done a whole podcast on this. I've done health results accelerator for thyroid-based issues. But a lot of people blame their thyroid. And I get it because when you run your thyroid-based labs, like the stress hormones, mood, and metabolism test, you see that you have elevated TSH, which is basically your body's call to make more thyroid hormone, which means you're in low thyroid. But if you run that with your typical PCP, they'll never tell you why you have low thyroid. And one of the main reasons for low thyroid, yes, it can be nutrient deficiency. It can be toxicity like heavy metals, like aluminum, mercury, cadmium, um, bromine. But another one is when you have chronic levels of stress, it begins to preferentially put more stress hormones, more cortisol out there, more glucocorticoid out there, more norepinephrine out there. And it starts to slow and shut down the thyroid. It actually does that out of preservation. Same with the estrogen dominance, because it's saying if we're in this high of a stress state, if we're, especially if we're under eating, what are we going to do? Slow metabolism. And that's so that your body can survive with less calories per day. That's not healthy, but your body's doing that to survive. Remember this organism right here, right? This organism, beautifully designed organism, you, it knows how to survive. The problem is it's been compensating for far too long. So my job is to get you to understand that everybody can make that scale move to a healthy degree. Everybody can lose the weight and create the perfect body for them. The perfect body for your friend? No, your body's your body. It's not supposed to be your friend's body. Your friend's body is not supposed to be your body. You want to get the perfect body for you, the healthiest body for you. You don't want to be underweight. You don't want to be overweight. You want to be within that sweet spot of that 19 to 24 BMI. Now, I know there's always a few outliers, but it's less than 1% of the population. So for the majority of people, that includes you and I, we need to fall within that area. That's what's going to lead us to live the healthiest, longest, and happiest life. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to link up a lot of additional information. Remember, there's lots of weight loss shows I've done Every single Wednesday for the past five years, there's been a podcast on how to transform your body. They're all free. You can literally go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcast. You can just click wellness and weight loss Wednesdays because it's always about transforming your health in order to be able to weight, lose the weight safely and keep it off for life. There's a lot of fads that you can do to try to lose it for a couple weeks or a couple months, no doubt about it. But you want to be able to learn why you gained in the first place. My highest recommendation is to run the big five labs to figure out exactly what's going on in your body. All right. 
If you can't, if you can only run one lab, you're going to run the original weight loss lab. And that is the stress hormones, mood and metabolism that goes through all of your hormones, your cortisol, your thyroid, <clears throat> excuse me, it goes through your vitamin D, which is uh, crucial for losing weight. And it goes through your blood sugar and insulin. So important to look at that. So that's, that's the number one. If you can only one run, if you can only run one, and I will link that up today again at stephencabral.com forward slash 1944. If you'd like to learn more about weight loss and really the system of weight loss, how to lose weight, you can go to uh, stephencabral.com forward slash health results accelerators. There's a course in there called Fatlocity, which teaches you the principles of weight loss. Um, or you can begin if you don't want to run a lab, you don't want to learn any more courses, is just to begin to learn more about your body, healthy patterns of eating, and detoxification. And there's a free course in that as well. But you can also go to equa.life forward slash detox and begin to look at a good, solid, functional medicine detox for 21 days that will begin to rebalance everything that we just spoke about on today's show. Is it the end all be all? No. Is it the best starting point? Yes. Do you do it for 21 days and then just go back to how you were typically moving and living? The answer is no. You're going to begin to transition. And again, there's many additional free podcasts that I have on this particular topic. So I'm always there for you. I really am. Just let me know what questions I can answer. This is a daily show. I keep answering your questions and really want to follow up with what you need the most. So, so many different options that you can choose from. All of them will be available today to see which one's the best fit for you at stephencabral.com forward slash 19. 1944. That's stephencabral.com forward slash 1944. We'll link it all up there. Again, much more to come, but hopefully this was helpful. And uh, again, like I said, we're there for you. Leave a comment on YouTube, leave a comment on Instagram. We'll be there to help. All right. Take care, everyone. Please do feel free to share this show with anyone you believe it could serve. Thanks so much for tuning into the show. Your support means the world to me. It really does, which is why I love to be able to create offers like this for our Equal Life and podcast listener community. We are right now offering over at Equal Life a buy one fatlocity gift one to anyone of your choice. We've never done this before. It's essentially a $99 giveaway for someone that you believe would be a great fit for Fatlocity or someone that you would love to have join you for our Fatlocity weight loss system. Remember, this is the top scientifically proven weight loss system in the world with over two dozen clinically verified studies based on the exact patented ingredients inside of Fatlocity. You can check it all out by simply going to equi.life forward slash Fatlocity and you'll learn all about the system. Not only do you get the nutritional supplements backed by science, which are the ingredients inside of that that are clinically proven orthomolecular nutrients and blended with Ayurvedic based herbal nutrients, but you also get my personal course that I give you for free whenever you sign up for Fatlocity. It's going to give you the diet plan, the nutrition plan. It's going to help you learn about your carbohydrate tolerance, which I talked about years ago and it's now becoming much more popular. So it's all inclusive. It really is. It is the system that's going to help you burn the fat and keep it off even if you haven't been successful in the past. And because we know that really you want to you want to embody and dive into a weight loss program with a partner. It just makes it so much better when you have the two of each other to lean on, right? When times are getting a little bit tough for you, then you can lean on someone else. And, and when they're having challenges, they can lean on you. You're both going through the system together. So right now, uh, over at Equa.life, you can click on the button right on the homepage while supplies last of buy one fatlocity, gift one free. Head on over Join up with a friend. We would love to hear your success story soon. Take care.